Well, good morning, everyone. How Hello. are you? We have Karen. And, and Dr. Burke. Yes. We have Dr. Burke. We're actually here today. So. Despite the snow. Right. right. And the lack of sunshine. Oh, it's my gosh. It's a very gosh. good time to take your vitamin D3, K2. Oh, my gosh. This is or like go horrendous. somewhere very sunny, like yeah. I am going to do. Like I'm not going to do. Um, so we're going we're gonna to provide some um, answers to your questions today. If there's anything that we say, it's not meant to diagnose you. It's not meant to replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before taking any of our, ad, of our advice. It's for entertainment and research purposes. That's right. And a little bit later, we're going to talk about the secret to slowing down premature grain, mm. especially if you're going into menopause. Now, um, so go ahead. If, if you're going into menopause, is it premature grain? Yeah, it is. I think that's a, that's a good description of it. Like some people don't. Because you go into menopause at 50. Right. Some people. Except me. I went earlier. Pe some people um, start losing their hair color earlier. Some people later. I'm going to talk about how to slow it down, and I'm going to give you some really interesting information that you probably have never heard in your life. Wow. Uh, and uh, there's two points I'm going to talk about. Uh, and so you might want to stay, stay listening. Coming up later in yeah. the show. Yeah, you do not want to click off right now. Right. Or you're going to miss out on a huge The secret. secret of the universe. That's right. Huge. So huge. I, I, I want to jump right to uh, Genevia <laughs> from Ohio. Are you there? I am. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hi. Hi. Oh, thanks so much for taking my call. Hi, Karen. Hi. <laughs> I, I, I had a question in regards to nutritional yeast um, while being on keto and IF. I know that you highly recommend it. However, I've um, come across some information that's out there in regards to people who have been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease and there being a counter contraindication taking nutritional yeast and for those folks specifically mm -hmm. um, Crohn's disease. Right. And I'm wondering if you know anything of that, about that or if that's something that I should be concerned <clears throat> about. Okay, so that brings up a good point. Now that you just opened a can of worms, so now we have to talk <laughs> about it. Um, um, the, the thing is that it's not, when you go on the internet, there's like you can hear every single opposing viewpoint. Um, there is some data that certain people with digestive issues have a sensitivity to any type of yeast. And in which case, if you take it, you, it would create a problem. It's rare. But if you have bowel problems, uh, taking the nutritional yeast, uh, I think, can help you greatly, especially if you're taking it in a form, which I always recommend, and my supplements also are this way. It's a non-fortified. So it's a higher quality. You're dealing with uh, non-GMO, high-quality yeast. Uh, <clears throat> They do um, make certain yeast GMO, and so there could be some glyphosate, you know, in there. So I, don't, I, don't, I can't tell you for sure, but the, when you have um, unfortified, high-quality nutritional yeast, there should not be a problem. In fact, those B vitamins, especially B1, help to act as an antioxidant for inflammation, for your digestion. So it's just the opposite. I think it can help a lot of people. So go ahead and try it, and if you react, then just do a natural B vitamin um, that you could probably try to find. It's difficult to find. Um, it's a little more expensive, but it's worth it. All right, thanks for your question. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now I need to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, very close to where I was raised, to uh, Balhavna. Are you there? Yes, I am. And is that how you say your name? Bavna. The Asian Bavna. Okay. Bavna. There you Bavna. Go. It's like two okay. syllables. Great. Go uh, ahead. What was your question? I uh, thank you for taking my phone call. Sure. It's very appreciated. Uh huh. Um, I recently started keto because my sister has followed you for a long time, and she is telling me that follow him, and um. I recently started, this is my fifth fifth day of on a keto diet, mm -hmm. and, but last night I almost quit because I had a body ache, my every joint on my leg, my hips, and 
my thigh, my, my um, calf, everything was hurting so bad. Mm. Like I wanted to somebody to like elephant to sit on it. Mm. So question, um, do you, are you doing intermittent fasting with this? Or yes, just, I am. Okay. And are you um, feeling any bloating with the vegetables that you're eating? No. Okay. Are you taking any B vitamins? I have it, but I haven't started. I bought it and I have it in my house, but I, I have not taken it. Okay. And what part of your body is aching? My legs and, and anything after, uh, below my hips. Okay, your legs are aching. Okay. Hips and below. Yeah, I think what's happening is you are adapting to uh, fat burning. You're just getting into it now. There's this phase of keto adaptation. And sometimes it takes three days, sometimes five days. You're right into it. And your cells are making new machinery. And if you don't take uh, enough B vitamins and potassium, that's why I recommend electrolytes and, and B vitamins, um, you can have um, various symptoms, including keto fatigue, keto rash, uh, inflammatory conditions, all these different changes. I think once you take that, those B vitamins, it'll completely go away. Um, there's also a video that I'm going to do today on restless leg syndrome, which I don't know if you have, um, but one really good remedy, especially nocturnal, especially if you get it at night, is a vitamin E. So that's another thing to just think about. But if you get a vitamin E, it must be in a whole food, not a synthetic version. Okay? Thanks for your question. Okay, Karen. What do we have over there? Hi. Well, this morning people are saying where they're from, so I'm going to give a shout out. Okay. Uh, is all over the United States, but Texas, uh, New York City, Hawaii. We've got um, Canada, Brazil, Australia, Malaysia, India, Sweden, London, Saudi Arabia. Wow. And Milwaukee, of, Wisconsin, which is exactly Milwaukee. about a half, 20 minutes from my house. Wow. Growing up. Now, I want to know if anybody from Puerto Rico is watching, because I'm going to yeah. go to Puerto Rico. Well, we'll find week. out. Right. So blow thing. up social media, Puerto Rico, if you're in the house. Now there's a question here. Somebody wants to get a CAC scan and they want to know if they need a doctor's prescription or how would you go about a CAC scan? And, mm -hmm. and since there's some people who probably don't know what that is, you probably want to Coronary explain. Coronary artery cal cal calcium test, calcium scan. There's different names. But this measures the calcium. It's the, one of the best predictors of heart problems. It's way better than LDL, cholesterol. Um, which, by the way, cholesterol, high cholesterol and LDL is not a good indicator of heart disease. Um, but it's the calcium that builds up. That really will tell you. You want your score zero, um, so you have to get a prescription from your doctor. So um, just ask for that. They'll give it to you. It's a pretty quick test. I did it. Mine came out zero. So um, that will give you more information than pretty much any other test. Okay? Awesome. All right, good. Wow. Uh, by the way, Pakistan. Wow. Peru. Peru. Our Peruvian Ma staff Machu will Pichu. be happy about that. Taiwan. Wow, that's great. Norway. On and on. You guys can that see. That's awesome. And Pennsylvania. There you go. Kutztown. Go Kutztown. Kutztown. Allentown. Bird in hand. <laughs> that's a town. Yeah. There's some great... There's some funny... I don't know. Funny name. Between Allentown and Kutztown, or, yeah. Right. We won't. Yeah. yeah. There's some just great. We won't great bring up the town. names. I, I love it. I think they're very creative. And Hey, listen, guys, don't go away. We're going to be talking about premature graying. Coming you got to check it out. Show. Yeah. So you don't want to miss out. Okay. Okay. We got to go to Sue from Indiana. Are you okay. there, Sue? Yes, good morning. Thank good you. Morning. I want to know about how to treat lipedema. Just a normal uh, gallbladder and estrogen dominance factors or something else? Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I can't tell you necessarily how to treat it, but what I can give you some information on <clears throat> what to research. Um, it's definitely related to the liver. Um, and it, it could be uh, a bile deficiency. Um, in which case, one of the best remedies, uh, especially if there's associated fatty liver, uh, is choline. Choline deficiencies actually cause a person to get a fatty liver, and, and when you have a fatty liver, you decrease your capacity to make bile, 
and then you develop all sorts of issues. So um, that's kind of the only data I have on that condition. So yeah, that's all I have. Thanks, Sue. All right, now we are going directly to James from Houston, Texas. Are you there, James? Yes, hi, hi Dr. Berg. Hi, how are you? Hey, I got a question. I'm, I've been doing uh, uh, keto for now for 10 months. I'm down 80 pounds. Wow. Ooh. And in one month, thank you. <laughs> Now, I got a big physical fitness test uh, here in one month, mm -hmm. and uh, to prepare for it, I want, I want your opinion on what I should do the day of before the fitness test on food, or should I do like a MC2 little coffee, or if, should, if I even should add any carbs to my meal in the morning before I take this test. Okay, so is the test like, uh, it's a fitness test? Yeah, it's a running, push-up, sit-ups type of test. Okay, and how... Is it going to be like um, like a major test to exhaust you, or um, are they going to measure? Yes, just kind I'll of... be I'll be yeah a mile and a half run and uh, push up and up so I'm dead. <laughs> Tired. Okay. So this is this is my secret weapon. Don't tell anyone I told you this. No. <laughs> this um, is a secret. No, what you do is the it's really not. Well, there's a couple things in the day of, but you don't want to do this. Um, well, the day before, you want, to, you want to actually do a lot of electrolytes. I would recommend my electrolytes. Why? Because it has some serious amount of potassium, which will then relate to a lot of energy production. Because you, your, your cells, your little energy factory cells, well, actually just the cells in general, have a um, sodium potassium pump that is related to energy. You need this potassium to generate energy. So you load up with the potassium, plus the potassium will help you in the storage of glycogen because you're going to be using a little of that starting out, then you want to adapt to fat. And then the other thing, the day of, I would recommend, of course my product, I'm not biased, but I'm um, being sarcastic, it's called mitochondria energy and the reason for that is those B vitamins um, increase your performance. It, incre it decreases lactic acid, so you can go longer. I'll give you an example. Uh, I tried this combination uh, on myself that really worked, and so then I developed a product. It's called Mitochondria Energy. And um, when I take it, I could pretty much go double. If I, I go up hills on my bike, I can go up a hill and then feel like I just I, I need to do more, so I just keep going. I just, I just don't get tired. So it's really the B vitamins and the potassium that will help you. Uh, as a side note, um, one of the reasons why it works is because it's a, it's a, the quality of ingredients, especially B1. You know, when, when you source uh, B vitamins, especially B1, um, the cost of synthetic B1 is about 4 to $5 a kilogram, which is so cheap. Um, this specific B1 that I sourced, just the B1 alone, is $2,800 a kilogram. I didn't tell you, but... It's very, 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 very expensive. So when you actually find the right thing and it's the real, <laughs> it's the real deal, it might be expensive, but it's, it's going to work so much better. So that being said, I would not do the carbs. I would be careful about what you eat the day before. That's going to be the key. Don't stuff yourself. Get a really good night's sleep. That's the most important thing. Don't eat so you're bloated. The day of, I would uh, not do carbs. I would do your regular thing, but make sure you do not overeat. Just probably, I would probably eat in the morning and then maybe like three hours before you work out. So now you have, you ate, you have these, your body's in fat burning, it's already digested so you don't have to focus on that. You do your, your thing and uh, you should dominate, you should do fine. So that's my advice and I'm sticking to and it. And you're sticking to it. Yeah. Oh, one, one last thing, James. <laughs> the fine print. Um, about a half hour before, um, the event, I would uh, take a vitamin E complex. Vitamin E deficiencies create weakness in the muscle and uh, fatigue in the muscle. So with vitamin E, you can go longer because it increases the oxygen carrying capacity of your skeletal muscles. Okay, that's it. Is that it? I'm done. Is there one more thing? There is, but I'm gonna share that at the end. At the end, okay, good. All right. Well, this question I love because I think it's, you know, you guys, if you've heard the term SAD, the standard American yeah. diet. So I have a great question. Yeah. Nicole says, whenever I eat cake, to 
toast, brown rice, hard alcohol, beer, not red wine, kefir, cheese, pasta, eggs, and coffee, which probably has cream in it. I start sneezing and I have a runny nose and congestion and headaches. Is this insulin resistant? What happens is he, when you, I think what happens is you combine, you're combining a carb with a protein or combining a carb with a fat, that raises the histamine levels. I'll give you an example. Um, and you see this a lot with barbecued ribs, which are like cooked with all the sugar, the sauce. Like everyone that consumes it, they get congested right away. They start build, filling up with mucus. So there's something that occurs with your immune system when you add sugar to your proteins or carbs that will raise that. I would do a strict keto and drop your carbs and see what happens to your histamines and your sneezing. Now, if that doesn't clear it out, then you need to work on the liver and the gallbladder because sometimes gallbladder congestion or sluggishness in the liver can actually cause a backup of uh, histamines and that could be it as well. And there's actually a name for that. Um, let me think what it is. I can't think of the name. It's the medical term for congested liver or gallbladder but I'll have to. Congestion. Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, exactly. It's from all my years of training. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Okay, here's one. I have deteriorate, uh, deteriorating disc and joint pain, severe pain, using D3K2, among other supplements. Mm -hmm. What else would you recommend? Manganese for manganese. disc. Manganese for the disc and ligaments. Um, that's the best, hands down, it's the best thing for your for your uh, discs. That's what I would do. And if you have a disc problem, watch my videos on low back pain because uh, I have a lot of different techniques that you may find that there's some other things involved that's, that's causing your lower back um, mm. pain. So check it out. And by the way, guys, I do need your help on something. If you wouldn't mind participating in this, and I will send out an official email, but we're trying to think of a keto slogan for a t-shirt. A clean slogan. You don't like mine. A clean slogan. Okay. No, we've had a few. Yeah, we want a clean, uh, it has to a be keto clean. slogan. Right. So and if, if, you, if you guys end up um, saying something that we use, we'll send we you will, some good stuff. We will definitely send you not just the t-shirt, but we'll send you some. some really cool stuff. Yeah. So go ahead and use your creative juices and let us know what a good t-shirt slogan would be related to keto. It has to be keto, it yeah. has to be family oriented, and it has to be catchy. Okay, yeah, catchy. there you go. So let's see what people can come up with. Okay, good. I think it's interesting here because uh, this, um, this is Facebook or YouTube, this is YouTube. Person is on a sailboat in Myrtle Beach watching. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Getting oh, vitamin D must be nice. No, it's, it's not far away. I'm, it's uh, South Carolina. Well, maybe it's sunny there. 500 miles. Yeah. Oh, it's 500 miles. Well, someone, I, okay. I noticed someone's asking a question about the mitochondrial formula. It's called mitochondrial energy. You can get more data on my website. But it's basically a, it's a B1 product um, mainly, but it's wrapped around some other things, some really serious natural, uh, natural things to help the mitochondria and give you the quality B1, which is involved in so many other things. Keto genius. We are keto genius. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Keep them keto coming, guys. Keto life. Key to life. I like that. I've heard that before. I need to go to Elizabeth. She's been waiting for 19 minutes and 51 seconds. <laughs> okay. Are you there, Elizabeth? I am. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. And she's from Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Right down just the down the road. Three hours. Yeah, not too far. Nope. All right, so I was wondering if Bulletproof Coffee will break my intermittent fast in the morning? Okay, so um, good question. I did a video on this. Um, you know, a true fast is you're not adding anything um, except water. So that's kind of like anything that you have, not supplements, but anything of any significance is going to break your fast. Okay, so that being said, I, don't, I think the real question is, will Bulletproof coffee break, break my fat burning, okay? Or break your ketosis? That's what I want to actually cover because there's a confusion on that. Um, <laughs> what? Keto is neato. Okay. okay. 
Okay, well, make sorry. notes of these things. <laughs> make notes of these things. This is good. This is really good, guys. Keep them coming. Here's the thing that I, um, when you consume Bulletproof coffee, you're adding MCT oil, some butter, and that is not going to break your ketosis. However, it's going to shift your ketosis. So the ketones that are coming out through your body are not your own. They're the stuff you put in there. So you're going to find that your weight loss may decrease a little bit or a lot, yet you're still in ketosis. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're adding the Bulletproof coffee, stop using that for a while and see if you don't lose more weight by cutting it out. But a lot of people don't have a problem with this and they can continue to do it and they can still lose weight and they use it to actually avoid the um, first meal. So go for it. So it's one of those things you're gonna have to just play around with to um, see what works for you. Thanks for your question. Okay. Here's one. Wanna look good in a Speedo? Yo gotta do keto. <laughs> I do like that, actually. I do like that. <laughs> and uh, keep them coming. You guys are, are very creative. I really appreciate you, that. Did, was that on there? Well, I think our, Terry thought of it. Oh, Terry geez. thought of it. He's going to, we may use that one. Okay, hey, Janice, you're from Florida. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, I do. You were just talking about the bulletproof coffee. My husband and I were taking it every morning with the MCT oil, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I started having uh, my heart start racing. I mean, my pulse usually is 58, and it went up to like 105. Wow. I mean, it was racing. It was this, um, and our um, our oh, cholesterol also went up. The doctor said to stop the the uh, MCT oil. Um, I want to get your opinion on that. I stopped the MCT oil. My heart has not raced, but it's only been two days since I stopped it. Um, could that have caused it? Is that what it was? Well, here's my take on that. I think what's happening is that you're, um, it's really too much oil for the gallbladder. And when you have a gallbladder congestion, it's too much and it's overloading the gallbladder. That itself can uh, affect the heart rate. And the reason I know that is because I've seen it so many times in, in practice where people come in and like they start increasing more fat and all of a sudden the heart kicks in there. I think what happens is the heart, the liver's right here, the heart's real close, the liver backs up, it puts some pressure on the, um, the gallbladder backs up, it puts pressure on the liver and then it starts to affect the heart and maybe putting pressure on maybe the, the nerves that affect the pacemaker. I don't know exactly but I think there is a connection between higher fat and pulse rate. I do not think it's the cholesterol that's clogging anything at all. Um, because MCT oil is a, is a median chain triglyceride and it's, it has a different pathway. It uses energy. So it's really a, an overwhelming kind of a gallbladder just can't handle all that digestion. Good question though. Thanks for your call. All right, good. Karen, what do we have coming in on social media? <laughs> I'm loving it. I hey, know. before you say anything, oh. five more minutes, five more minutes. And we're you're going to give the secret. We're going to talk about the secret to premature graying hair. What to do to slow it down, guys. You need to tune in. In five minutes, we're going to give it to you. Go ahead. I know Cheeto on keto. <laughs> 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 you I were know. waiting. I know you, Cheeto. you were waiting to I'm use that, keto. that laugh. I uh, hope you're writing all these down. I'm, I'm some of them. Born to keto, uh, uh, keto, keto, keto health. A lot of keto health ones. Keep calm, keto on. I like that one. Uh, That's good. There, there's tons of them. Wow, I like this. So do we have a question coming up here? Well, here's somebody, Hannah, on Facebook. She says she's rapidly gaining weight on keto and IF. She's eating one meal a day. Rapidly gaining weight. Okay. So first of all, um, what's probably happening is that it is not um, anything other than your vegetables. You're, you're, you're sensitive to your vegetables. The vegetables are not um, digesting properly. They're bloating you. So I would... Try this experiment, reduce the vegetables, steam them, cook them, reduce them. Change the different vegetables that you're having to make sure you don't have any bloating, and then see if you're actually your weight loss is handled. 
And the other thing that you want to check from that is that your, your fat, are you, how much fat are you consuming? Is it a tremendous amount? Is it a little bit? If there's too much fat, that can also be an issue. But it's probably the vegetables. So it's not really fat because there's no way one meal a day is you're going to start gaining weight like crazy unless there's something else going on. Good question. All right, do we have another question? Lots of questions. Great. You want to give, give keto me Keto junkie, I heart keto, keto vibes. Uh, questions, yes. Do you have a menu to go by? Something simple, and I'm combining a few questions here. On a budget, which is an interesting question because, you know, we spend less money. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's keto, but also intermittent fasting. Because also, we're not eating gobs and gobs of protein. We're also not eating packaged food, which tends to be the most expensive food in the grocery store. So, yeah, we buy organic. We don't eat as frequently. That's we don't eat as frequently. We don't eat gobs and gobs of protein. I mean, we have a small serving of protein each yeah. meal. Uh, we, we spend a lot less money now that we're, the whole household has been over the last few years. Yeah, the thing is like... Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're dealing with. I mean, I could see a college student that has like one dollar a day that they have to survive on. But when you're doing intermittent fasting, you're gonna, you're going to save like four to six hundred dollars a month. That's number one, and um, it's not going to be. I think the best thing to do is get a better job to afford <laughs> higher quality food. The, the in this book, I, I give you the meal plans and the food, and it's simple and it's what, basic. And the smaller um, book. The smaller book comes with it. Okay, this is the for free. And you can get that, and get the exact all meal the, plan. And you see the pictures and the meal plans. Yeah, so, because here's the thing. If you're going to do it, might as well know all the details. Might as well have all the questions. Point so, to make on the website. On drberg.com, yeah. it is comes one, with the book. This one right here. Not on Amazon, but you have to go to drberg.com. Where you can get everything anyway. It's going to just give you um, the exact way to do it. So you don't, you don't uh, take so much time trying to figure it out. Um, this, so, like all the questions coming up are in that book. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it takes work to read a book. And this is why I have this. Well, it's there's a lot short. of pictures in the book. Hour. It takes a half hour. Yeah. So you basically jump in there, bite the bullet, read the book, and yeah. get the, the simplicity of how you should do it. Yeah, don't believe people that, oh, it's so expensive. I mean, have you, I'd like to know people that have asked it's so expensive or how do they do it on a budget. Have they gone out to buy vegetables? Or, I mean, I guess if you're eating a, um, a frozen dinner f at night, a frozen dinner. Like when I was in college, I had two weeks where I had one packaged cup of soup a day. Yeah. That was not keto. It was intermittent fasting, though, and I did See? lose 13 See? pounds in two yep. weeks. See, Karen? But, I mean, so we both know. We both know uh, putting ourselves through college and having no money for food and figuring that out. We didn't have any tech on what to eat. Technology. Technology. We could have done better on that. But... It's 11.30. I have to bring up time. the grain. Yeah. Okay, so the, this little tip, guys, is... Um, is just part of the answer. There's going to be another one right before the end, so you don't, want to, you don't want to go away. So, okay, premature grain. So you have these cells that make um, pigment, okay, melanocytes. They make melanin, and that's associated with pigment. And it gives you the color of your hair, color of your skin, the color of your eyes, okay? So um, there, it, there's an enzyme involved in making this pigment, and it's called tyrosinase. Okay, it's copper-based. It's actually part of the vitamin C complex. And there's, uh, there's a food that has the most tyrosinase. Okay? And, should uh, we guess what it is? I think you guys should try to guess what it is. I think so that's real quickly, good. what is the food that has uh, a real serious... I mean, there may be another food that has more, but no I, have, I don't know of any other food that has more. But go ahead and type in what food you think has the most tyrosinase, which, by the way, gives you... Gives you the enzyme to help make more pigment in your hair. What? Did that sound funny? No, that was great. Okay. <laughs> I think she's laughing with me, not at me, so that's good. I'm pretty much laughing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so. What vitamin? No Googling. They're not Googling. I know. Well, I 
Okay, Sometimes so as, they do go -go. as you're trying to figure that out, guys, which you're going to be surprised, I have to go right to another caller. Uh, Leah from Michigan, you had a question about protein. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I, okay, so I have two small questions. Mm -hmm. um, one, as a fitness competitor, do you still recommend um, the moderate protein for someone who's really serious about building muscle? Good question. How much do you weigh? Uh, 166 right now. Yeah. I think if you're a serious competitor, you need a little more protein. So it wouldn't necessarily be a massive amount, but um, I would say right around eight ounces of actual protein. Okay. Not, 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 the, not the protein inside the meat, but actually if you weigh out like a piece of fish or a hamburger or meat, that would be eight, ounce, eight ounces. I think that would be what you should do if you actually compete because you do need a little bit more, absolutely. You, but when you go into like 10, 12 ounces, then you're going too high. A little bit too much. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my other question um, is I saw that you didn't recommend um, like the proteins and the carbs um, with like the protein powders because of the insulin spike. And I didn't know if that made a difference. Um, like if I were to make like a protein shake and I mix it with, you know, like the veggies and like a fat or something, if mm -hmm. that would make a difference. And then what you would recommend for protein for someone um, like when I remember when I was pregnant and I just could not eat like meat and fish and everything Like what would you recommend as an alternative for that for protein? Yeah, uh, okay, so you so so what's what are you kind of um, Opposing like eggs like in meat or what or fish or what what specific protein can't you tolerate? Well, it's not that I couldn't tell I just eat like someone who's pregnant like I just couldn't stand you know, for that period of time, I couldn't stand like the smell of meat and everything. Yeah. Um, and so I know I used some like protein powder and I just mixed it in um, with like a vegetable shake and I, you know, I had fats and everything in it. But I see that you don't recommend mm, okay. the protein with the carbs because of the insulin spike. Yeah. So uh, a couple things on that. There is, good, there is something I'm going to talk about. Give me about two to three weeks on a plant. Uh, protein that'll literally blow you away. It's like it's comparable to whey. It's and it's nothing to do with soy or even pea protein. Um, so just stay tuned for that. But I'm still doing my final research on that. Um, but here's the thing: like with with pregnancy, your body is going to tell you what you need. So if your body's like, no, I don't want that, you're going to have to switch it up. Protein powder, totally fine. Let's say you want to do a high quality whey protein powder, then you can add, you know some greens in there, uh, some fat in there, but realize that um, too much whey protein can actually cause insulin resistance because it does spike insulin, but it won't increase your blood sugars. It just increases insulin. But on the other hand, um, some people don't have a problem with it. Um, and I think because at the same time, it increases the opposing hormone called uh, glucagon. And so glucagon kind of you know, insulin is, um, has one function of storing fat, but then glucagon actually releases fat. So the combination of both of those hormones, I think, will actually drive the protein into your cells more. Um, and I think periodically, some whey protein is not going to be bad at all. But when, I'm, but when you go to the uh, GNC or some health food store and you're taking massive amounts of whey protein all day long, eventually, I think you could you increase your risk for getting insulin resistance because it's basically it's so lean and of course they have all the sugar in it too so you want a, a high quality um, whey protein grass fed some people also are allergic to the whey it is a protein in addition to casein there might be some casein in there too so um, some people are inflamed when they take it so I think the uh, for right now pea protein would be your best bet and another good protein source would be the sardines, um, if you can do that as well. All right, great question. Thank you so much. All right, Karen, what do we have? Okay, so we have Michelle on Facebook, and she says her husband and... and wait, wait, wait. Oh, what? What oh. food? Oh, what food by we the way. What, what are people saying? Everything, you name it. I started writing things down, and it was the list was too long. 
limes, avocado, coconuts, kale, cabbage, asparagus, peppers, ginger, liver, nuts, onions, apricot seeds, nutritional yeast, green tea. Uh, um, okay, so there's a lot of different answers. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, so I stopped. It, it was, we're talking about what food has uh, high amounts of tyrosinase to help uh, produce more pigment in your, your hair. What do you think it is, Karen? Uh, I got nothing. Mushrooms. Wow. Yeah. And let me tell you how I, I found that data. Said that. I'm going to tell you how I found that data. I have a little secret that I do. I actually, um, it's kind of a little hack that um, I don't think I told anyone okay, broadly is, now uh, about this. Now, get your pencil. No. I think I, I might have mentioned it sometimes, but the, one of the ways I do research when I come up with a video to speed things up is I study patents. Because, oh. because if someone's going to get a patent, they do all the research for you. You have all the references that you can then speed up your diving into and looking at something. Um, so there's a lot of great data that summarizes uh, in pa different patents, the Google patents. You can look them up. And now I, I do that all day long with natural remedies and stuff. And so <laughs> someone's getting a patent on mushroom tyrosinase for anti-graying. And I started looking at this and going, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So um, that would be something that you can consume if you're if you need a good copper base enzyme if you're deficient in copper and the adrenals need copper um, and they store copper to make these hormones and um, so now that being said guys there's another aspect of this that's even more interesting mm. than what I just told you mm. and I'm going to be revealing that <gasps> right later in before the we're going to be done here so don't but log I off right now Okay, so would I eat, would I buy the mushrooms? supplement? Would I eat no. just the mushrooms? You want to add mushrooms to your diet to get the tyro tyrosinase. How much mushroom? I would have maybe just like a normal serving, a couple, like a cup or something like that. Saute it. Okay. Um, but you don't want to overcook it. You want to have it, um, you know, somewhat sauteed but not dead. Not dead. And then copper, that brings up another point. Yeah. I asked you the other day. Mm -hmm. I have some really cool vintage uh, copper pots, and the lining inside one of them is has worn away, and the copper is exposed. And I yeah. asked you, gee, would we still want to ever use that pot? And you said no. No. So why don't you tell? You don't want to be chewing on pennies. You don't want to have that type of copper. That is a, it's called inorganic copper. It's a metallic. You want a food base. The copper that's in mushroom is a plant-based, it it's, fits in an enzyme that is easy for our bodies to assimilate. It has different bonding, that's all I'm going to tell you. So, um, but when you get copper as an element from the dirt or the pot, that's toxic to your body and it uh, can cause cancer. So you want the food-based copper, uh, tyrosinase. You can also get tyrosinase in oysters. Mm. Oh, I think someone said oysters. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, again, that, that's going to feed the, um, the cells that make pigment. pigment. Mm. Okay? It's a pigment of your imagination. Oh, and uh, so that's one little tip, guys. There's another one that's even more interesting. Yes. And uh, John Goodhue, on, uh, this is on YouTube, is asking about the summit. Keto Summit 2019. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to pick the date, Karen. You're going to find the date. Well, I have to get with the hotel. Today. We're, we're scheduling an appointment. Yeah. This Early in the year, this year, we're getting a, a jump start. So we're going to have more time. We're going to create more things. We'll have more people be able wow. to sort out their logistics and Listen, so guys, they can join us. I'm already planning this. This is going to be the summit that you want to come to. If you didn't come to the last one, you need to come. If you came, you need to come again. It's going to be a three day event Friday, Saturday, and half a day Sunday. And, um, Unbelievable data, unbelievable. So new speakers, uh, so we're working on that. You're gonna love it. Okay. That being said, Karen, I'm just that get, give me that being date said. today, so I can start telling people. Uh, I need to go to Sally from Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Sally. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. Thanks. Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I have a little dilemma. Uh, I'm on the ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. which has treated me so well. I've only been on it six weeks. Um, I lost 21 pounds Woo! right off the bat within three weeks. 
Wow. And the problem is, I've still got 125 to go, but for the last, that was the first three weeks, but now the last three weeks, I have not lost anything. Oh. Um, however, my, my body is going through a lot of adjustments. My high blood pressure is gone. My tachycardia is gone. My type 2 insulin-dependent diabetes is gone. And my fatty liver has, it was severe fatty liver. It is drastically uh, the numbers have gotten much better. Okay. So I'm wondering if my body's just trying to adjust. Yeah. <clears throat> also, that's not weight or water weight loss because I normally take Lasix on a daily basis, mm. which I'm actually able to cut down now wow. by half. Wow. So it's not like that was 21 pounds of just water because I know my base weight when, you know, after I finish my Lasix every day. So I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm going to give you a couple things, Sally, um, and I want you to stay tuned in the next week or so. I am going to send out a video uh, related to what you're saying. Um, I'm just trying to think what date it could be. I can't tell you exactly what date, but I'm working on it just because I think that you need an organized step-by-step um, -step process. There's three things that I think you should look at. Number one, it's all about get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. So your body obviously is getting healthy. Weight loss is one of the symptoms. The other symptom is no fatty liver, lots of energy, less medication. So it's working, and your body will go through this process of building proteins, which is heavier per volume than fat. So you could be just in a healing mode right now um, because a lot of people will plateau and heal the structure of the cells and then start using up some of the, the stored fat. But there's all these things that you can increase. You can decrease your carbs a little bit more. You can take nutrition, electrolytes and B vitamins. I do recommend my brand simply because it's high quality and it'll speed things up. I mean, just the potassium alone is like 1,000 milligrams. And that will actually kind of kick things in gear, especially if you had a history of insulin resistance. Um, the other thing is you want to uh, add exercise, increase your sleep, and then lastly, uh, cut down some of the fat so as you do intermittent fasting, hopefully you're at one meal a day, you cut down some fat down to about 75 grams. Now, um, the new videos that I do are going to cover, like, what does that mean? Um, so you can get an, an easier understanding. But 20, 75 grams now forces you to burn more of your own fat instead of the dietary fat. So try those things, Sally, and let us know how you do. All right, Karen, do you have a question? Jump on keto, quit the burrito. <laughs> I like that. Uh, are you writing all these down? No. I'm going to have to go back. I mean, these you have are to these just, are classics. I know. There's wow. there's so many. But uh, or the Tostitos. Or the Doritos. Cut the Doritos out. Yeah, I like you that. You don't want to mention a brand name. Listen, I was a I used to love Doritos by the Mega Pack. I know. Okay. So I need to go to Angie if you don't have a question. South South Dakota. Are you there, Angie? I am. Hi. What's your question? So I started keto in June. I've lost 50 pounds. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I get several times. Um, I'm 46, and I just, um, I lost my dad in June, okay? So I started noticing a lot of hair loss. Mm -hmm. So I started reading about it, and I was wondering if it was, partially from my dad's loss and keto or what it was, but I also am getting my period twice a month and that's annoying. Mm -hmm. So I went and got my blood work done with the doctor and my cholesterol was 324. So my HDL was 65 um, and my triglycerides were 75. So she didn't care about anything but me taking red yeast rice pills. Oh, okay. So wow. I looked that up. It's amazing. I said to her, I'm not I'm not taking any sort of statin drugs. I'm not doing that. Um, I could cut down some fat in my diet. Perhaps my bulletproof coffee was the problem. So I started just kind of investigating and I do intermittent fasting twice a week for 16 hours. Um I do have some stress because I'm in nursing school, mm 
Mm-hmm. But I, I try to make sure I get eight hours of sleep every day. Wow. Okay. Um, Good data. Careful at exercise. Well, first of all, I'm shocked that your doctor told you to take red yeast, and that because that's a natural form of the statin, which I think is awesome. You can take that if you're concerned. I'm not too concerned about your cholesterol simply because your triglycerides are nice and low. And I have videos on this. Um, and the reason when you when you when you do keto, you're actually going to increase your fat. Because you, why? Because you're living off of fat energy, so your whole fat metabolism is is scaled up. Um, People have this idea that cholesterol is bad. No, it's your body makes it. All, a lot of the cholesterol in your, a lot of fat cells in your body are combined of cholesterol and triglycerides. Well, guess what? When those things release, the triglycerides come out, you're burning that for energy, that's why they're low, but the cholesterol has to also come out with it. That's what you're probably seeing. I think you just need to continue, uh, maybe, um, but the fact that you, you had a loss and you, you have the hair, I would honestly increase um, your B vitamins, high quality B vitamins, nutritional yeast. I think that will actually help your hair tremendously. Um, that being said, um, there's other things that have to do with the hair. You can actually watch my video on that. And that was my clue to like speed it up because I'm talking too long. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, okay. I, I'm just laughing at some of the things people are. Oh, you're not listening to my answer? I wasn't listening at mm. all. I, I, I'm sure you were saying something good. Okay, Angie. Um, I hope that helped, Angie. So I will talk to you real soon. Someone says, Karen, what, do you eat once a day or how does your eating, what does your eating look like? I generally eat once a day. Uh, sometimes I eat twice a day. It's as simple as that. Now, um, since you brought that up here, and I think it's important to bring up um, like the pattern of intermittent fasting. Um, a lot of people are just doing this certain pattern of like, I do exactly at one o'clock, I do at six o'clock, or I'm always eating at the same time. Um, I'm gonna do a video on this, but um, a really good technique for exercise is to, it's called muscle confusion, because as you work out consistently, your body gets used to it, and all of a sudden your gains disappear because your body's adapted. The same thing goes with intermittent fasting. If you can not have the same pattern over and over and over again, if you could like let your body tell you, well, oh, this morning I'm going to eat, but then I'm going to fast all day and, you know, whatever. Or let's say, let's say you're doing one meal a day, you eat different times or twice a meal, twice, twice a day you're eating different times. Or one day you're doing eating one meal a day, the next day you're twice. That actually is better than doing the same thing over and over. That, it frees up the, this body thing. Because if you think about our bodies were developed long ago, not having this pattern. <laughs> like someday we would eat, someday we would not eat. Right. So well, that's you, what I did. Right. So it's working. I don't I eat. I mean, look at you. You've lost a ton of weight. <laughs> <laughs> What's your point? The Dr. proof's Bird? in the pudding, Karen. Let's, That's the icing uh, in the cake. So here's one. Relationship status, keto. I, I think everybody who's on Facebook right now should change their relationship status to keto. I think that would be a kick in the pants. Oh, wow. That's good. Isn't that good? I like that. So there's your, your Facebook You're married challenge. to a ketone? No. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All right. So, um, guys, I think it's uh, five more minutes. We're Is it reveal. time for something right now, though? No, no, it's not. It's five more minutes. I remember you and saying And we are going to reveal the last thing, and this is fascinating. You do not want to miss this. I'm serious. This is like, I mean, I'm impressed how important this information is. So stay tuned. You're impressed with Don't, your own self. Yes. Don't click off. <laughs> we need good. to go to Melissa from New Jersey. Hi, Was Melissa. Born in New Jersey. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, so... First of all, I want to say thank you. Um, I've been following your program since August. Uh, I've lost 58 pounds. Woo! Um, God, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of my biggest problems in the beginning was leg cramps. So I watched uh, your videos uh, about electrolytes. I did actually purchase your electrolyte powder, which has helped significantly. Um, but I noticed something odd. Actually, when I was in the shower, um, when I shave my legs, the back of my calves are numb. 
um, sometimes. So I don't know if you've ever heard of like numbness in the legs before. And if you have, if you have uh, any recommendations on what to do to resolve that. Yeah. Um, well, I think you need more B vitamins. Um, the combination of B vitamins and sometimes vitamin E as well will help this. But I think in your case, um, because the, the B vitamin deficiency, not just vitamin B1, but also vitamin B8 and even 9 and even B6 can create uh, peripheral neuropathies and nerve problems. So what I would do is I would spike those B vitamins and see if that doesn't just take care of it. All right. Thanks so much for your question. All right. We live in Ketoburg. <laughs> Ketoburg. There we go. Several people asking, where is the summit? Once again, the summit will be it's in... the same location as it was last time. Yeah. It's technically Maryland, but Virginia, Gaylord Maryland. Gaylord Hotel. Gaylord Hotel. It was a nice place. It's a great place. Yeah. Very accommodating. Very easy to get in and out of. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get good deals on the rooms and... Guys, we've got three more minutes uh -oh. until I reveal this incredible information, so don't go away. Okay, so we need to go to Kathy from Pennsylvania. Are you there? Yes. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Um, my son has been having me watch your videos a lot, and I am highly impressed with uh, what you know and, and how you're helping people. Awesome. And if we'd want to become like you, um, what is the best way just to get your book and, and your acupressure tool, or what do you suggest? Well, I think uh, eventually you should do, be a keto coach. I have a coaching course, which is awesome. It's, it's not that long, but it's just filled with just the right information just to be dangerous. I'm just kidding. It's just <laughs> enough information to really uh, create some serious impact on other people. So you can, that's like um, step one. Um, also, the books are going to be very important. The book you is can, a must. Yeah, you just start reading that. You're going to get a lot of data. Book. I put so much stuff into that book. Um, so it's going to be it's packed through information. The massage tool is also really amazing. Um, I show you how to use this. This is a technique that uh, I use in my practice, but you can actually use it on yourself. Do I use that often, Karen, in our house? Every single day. And or night. every night. Yeah, I use this to go to bed at night. <laughs> like you hit these points, and do I go to do I go to bed quickly, Karen? <laughs> the quiz. Everybody answer below. Does Dr. Burr go to sleep quickly? Probably within seconds. Within seconds. Bam, I'm out. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I would do. But there's a great keto uh, coaching training that I have. Yeah. Um, so you can check that out. So start Thanks, with Kathy. the book, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Kathy. Something. All right. Before we go, oh no, we got one more minute. Keto mania. So, I, I like, like that. that. Hey, Brittany. This is our last question before I reveal the secret. Go ahead, Brittany. You're from Denver. Yes. Um, I have a question about menorrhagia, which I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like really heavy periods, heavy and painful periods. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I was just wondering why keto would help that because I've been on keto for about 15 days now and I notice a major difference. I haven't cramped at all. Wow. Well, here's the thing. Which is um, great. I mean, yeah, it's basically estrogen dominance, and there's a couple ways to deal with it. You can, you know, you can take sea kelp for the iodine. You can take something called DIM, which is a concentrated cruciferous vegetables that help regulate estrogen. But when you do keto, you are changing your entire endocrine system because you're dropping the dominating hormone that's affecting everything else. You're dropping insulin to a normal level, and when you drop insulin all these other hormones kind of fall into place. I mean, even think something called, think about something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's high levels of androgen, and that comes from high levels of insulin. So, you know, the endocrine system is real sensitive to um, a lot of things, but it needs a good amount of fat. So I think you're feeding the system. It's working, uh, and that's awesome that it worked. Does that make sense? Awesome, Yes, it makes total sense. Well, thank you so much. And I just have one more thing. I think you should do a debate with Jillian Michaels. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, mm. I think, I think I don't know if she would even do it, but I would love to do that. Um, but we'll see. Um, we'll see. We'll go from there. Yeah. Hey, guys. So right. I'm well, you guys ready. Thank you. Okay, guys, you so, too. Um, all right. So now, Karen, here yeah. we go. 
we talked about tyrosinase, mushrooms, okay? Mushrooms. Yeah, but there's... Any kind of mushroom, by the way, people ask. Well, not the kind that causes... Not hallucinogenic mushrooms, yeah. obviously. Okay. Mushrooms. So, here's the thing. Yeah. There are other things that um, destroy the pigment. And when you're... We're back you're, to the... Hold on, 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 hold on. You have Hold to on. orient just, people. Just listen. Listen. Okay. Listen to me. Listen, Linda. Listen. Bring it Linda. down. Linda. Linda. Bring it listen. down. Linda. <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, there's this something called hydrogen peroxide that your, your cells make. And if I took hydrogen peroxide from Karen's hair and poured it right here, it would oxidize it and would turn it. it would, you'd lose the pigment very quick. We're not going to do that as I've a demonstration. I've done it. I've done it. Why? When I was younger. Okay. So hydrogen peroxide is made by your own cells when your cells lose certain things and when you go through stress. Okay, when the adrenal glands pump adrenaline, that adrenaline will release hydrogen peroxide and basically oxidize your hair. So a lot of times that's coming from stress, right? But the main antidote, the remedy, the neutralization of the hydrogen peroxide uh, is from vitamin E. Okay, vitamin E, not the synthetic version, but a really good, our bodies use vitamin E to actually neutralize. It's, like, it's a real powerful antioxidant. Vitamin E is used for so many things. When you go through menopause, what shifts? Well, you lose your, the function of the ovaries now. They're not going to be releasing eggs now. So, they're the pituitary that regulates the ovaries um, shift to the point where they don't need to work so hard. A lot of your vitamin E is stored in the pituitary. When you go through menopause and even pre-menopause, your vitamin E levels plummet. So you don't have the neutralization for the hydrogen peroxide from the stress that you're getting from the adrenal and the adrenaline. So we compound that the fact that other, vitamin E is also good for hot flashes hmm. and premature, premature wrinkling of the skin mm. and spider veins and varicose veins. So you can see that like all these things like make sense. So if you are going through menopause and you're not consuming enough vitamin E from the foods or you're not even maybe taking a vitamin E, you're, you're going to notice your hair is just going to gray out. Okay, so because that's going to actually neutralize the hydrogen peroxide. How was that for a tip, Karen? Good. I can't miss. I don't think you're that excited no, about it. No, I'm very I'm excited. excited about I, it. This I, is huge. I'm going to eat more mushrooms and take vitamin E. Yeah. More. Now, don't take a uh, synthetic version. Get a food-based. Um, you can even get, some people don't like this, but uh, like wheat trim oil, raw wheat trim oil that's mm. fresh. That's so low-dose vitamin E. But, or else get a vitamin E complex with uh, tocotrienols and all the different uh, uh, parts of that vitamin E. Okay. That said, guys, thank you so much for your questions. They were great. Thanks and for your coming results. out. All of the world. Yes. Didn't shout out everybody, but it's amazing. And we will see you oh. next week. I will see you next week. You won't see me next week. I'll be That's in right. Puerto Rico. I will be here. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good one.